right. but how do you predict hmm. what do you know about the first house tell me uh it's about the person's overall life about his health what is uh, so body. when we say overall life let's say you see a planet here yeah this is a person's overall life also mm -hmm. this is the person's body also his personality also mm -hmm. his outlook how uh, how he is looking his appearance also so now what we are what we are going to study is that what happens when a planet when a planet sits here yeah. or how do we study a house a principle says that we would first look at the planet whenever we are studying a house so when we when we look at a horoscope we study it house by house mm -hmm. all right so when we are studying it house by house what is important is that we pick up a house we read that house yeah. right we pick up a house we read that house yeah. so this house is a area of a person's life right so if i want to predict about a person's childhood mm -hmm. i will look at the second house and i can predict about a person's childhood mm -hmm. a overview not in detail mm -hmm. the overview okay if i want to see if somebody has wealth i will look at his second house yeah. and see if it if he has wealth if i want to say that this person is rich or poor has wealth or no mm -hmm. has he made money how will i say that i will say that looking at his second house yeah yeah if i want to say if a person is healthy where do i see in the chart first and foremost i will look at the first house first house uh, i will look at the first house yeah. if the lagna is strong yeah the person is strong yeah. this is you yes or yeah. the native yeah himself or herself yeah yeah, yeah. so if i want to uh, if i want to say that a person has a difficult life let's say a uh, a general overview statement a generic statement that this person would have a difficult life i would say that looking at the first house yeah a person is good looking i would say that looking at the first house right a person he, how much he is respected or the overall personality of a person i would say that looking at the first house only yeah okay. so what kind of a person we are dealing with we will look at the first house Mm -hmm. and predict mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how do we predict any idea you would want to take a guess um first look uh, uh if there are uh, if there is a planet sitting in the in the first house or not yes uh if there is not looking at uh planets aspect in the first house and uh, if there are no no planets aspect aspect in the first house looking at the house lord like them so you know first and foremost whenever we are reading a house what is it that we are going to see the first thing we'll pick is the placement right when we say placement we would say that is there a planet sitting in that house mm -hmm. so we if as i said if saturn is sitting here yeah so first and foremost thing is that we will look at saturn right and because saturn is sitting here it, he is in charge now yeah. of this house correct yes second let's say if there's no planet sitting 
and if there's no planet sitting and you have mars here so or venus here yeah so there are two planets taking control of this house mars yeah. has a special aspect four and eight other than seven so it looks yeah. at the fourth house from itself also yeah one two three four yeah yeah so mars is expecting Mm -hmm. Venus is expecting. So they become in charge. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly the planet sitting in front, which is the seventh uh, aspect of a planet. So every planet aspects the seventh house from itself. All planet has, uh, all the planets um, have this aspect, the seventh aspect. Every planet aspects the seventh house from itself so if let's say let's not con confuse ourselves if let's say venus is sitting here mm -hmm. yeah and if venus is sitting here it has taken responsibility of the first house right. because there's no planet here right. now we say that no planet is sitting here also no planet is looking at the at this house also. Mm -hmm. Then what will we see? Then we will see where is the lord of this house sitting. Right. Let's say Mars is sitting here. Mm -hmm. Mars is the lord of the first sign, Aries sign. This is Aries, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. And Mars is the lord. Yeah. You see where Mars is sitting? Mm -hmm. First and foremost, you would see the placement of a planet in a house. Mm -hmm. Then you see the aspect. Mm -hmm. And then you would see that where is the Lord sitting? Step number one, if this is there, then you obviously know that this is the planet controlling. Mm -hmm. If this is not there, then you see this. And if this is also not there, then you see this. But that is one way of looking at it. You would also you would also see cases when there is a planet sitting here or if there are multiple planets sitting mm -hmm. here so first let's say one planet is sitting here so that means this planet has taken charge of this house yeah and if there's another planet looking at the house there will be some variations yeah yeah because nothing cancels out in astrology right yeah uh, can so, i ask you uh, something yes please please uh, since they are there are two uh, planets in the first house. Uh, how do, do you determine which uh, planets has the most authority over the house? We'll come back to that later. Okay. Yeah, okay. that is an advanced stage. Okay. okay. First, we have to understand what we are saying. Right. Let's say, so the more planets you see in a house, the situation will get complex, obviously, because there will be variations. Right. Yeah. But first, we have to take the principle okay. that how we are reading a chart or how we are reading a house. Okay. First, we will see if we there's a planet there. So if we see a planet there, so if we are looking at the seventh house and we see a planet here, like moon you see here. So if moon is here, that means moon has taken control on this house. Yeah. Okay. If moon was not here, then we would, we would see any planet looking at this house. He would control this house. And if there is no planet sitting and no planet expecting, then you would see where the Lord has gone. Oops. And the influence on the Lord of the house. Mm -hmm. Let's say yeah. one planet is placed here. So this planet has taken the responsibility of the house. Mm -hmm. 
so now you know this planet is controlling the house yeah we would go to the lord of this house also but we know by the placement of the planet that this planet is controlling this house right yeah it is sitting here yeah and it it is kind of controlling the house right second we see now if it is a good planet or a bad planet we'll come back to that later yeah first we are at the principle that how do we read a house yeah so we if we see a planet here then we say that this planet is controlling the house yeah and how is it controlling first by its own karak tatvas yeah karak tatva or significance of the planet yeah first is its karak tatva yeah you have to remember one thing whenever dasha of any planet starts yes the first effects that you see is of the karak tatvas of the planet right no matter what is the role of the planet in the chart that you would see later okay but okay. a planet can never leave its nature or its karak tatvas yeah so the first effects that you start feeling is of the karak tatvas of that planet right karak tatvas is one that when you see a planet in a house you say that you would kind of feel or realize the karak tatvas of that planet mm -hmm. in the areas related to the house mm -hmm. because the house is being controlled by that planet sitting in that mm -hmm. house second is the lordship okay of the planet sitting lordship yeah lord of leo yeah lying in the fifth house yeah so fifth lord sitting in the ninth house this yes. is the lordship yeah so first karak tatva or significance of the planet mm -hmm. itself then the lordship okay okay and then okay. ultimately what is it going to do with you obviously depends on its lordship and its natural beneficence and maleficence if it is going to make your life easier or not yeah if it is a natural benefit it will make the life there easier if it is a natural malefic it will make life difficult there in that area of the of, of life wherever mm -hmm. the planet mm -hmm. is sitting mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. so this natural benefic malefic is a very important factor yeah. then the role of the planet in the chart you would see if it is a functional benefic that means he is trying to do good for you if it is a functional malefic you know that it is going to give you problems yes and if it is both a functional malefic and a natural malefic mm -hmm. then you kind of you kind of become hopeless <laughs> yeah yeah so if we say Saturn in this chart. In this chart of Aries, Lagna, mm -hmm. Saturn is a malefic planet. Functionally, yeah, and naturally also it is a malefic planet. Yeah, wherever it sits, wherever in the chart, right, you will face problems from that area in your life. wherever it sits okay if it sits here it is gonna give you 
enough and more problems uh, you will have a lot of stress mm-hmm. and problems in life mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if let's say it sits here it will spoil your domestic life yeah your this is your own house mm. there would be no peace in the house mm. there would be various problems that you would you can keep listing down the problems this planet being the functional malefic also and natural malefic also so you would say that this house is kind of lost mm. because there is no peace in the life of this person yeah. okay yeah say so it is very difficult for this person to stay happy mm. there will always be some kind of stress mm. however it is looking at this house which is its own house mm mm-hmm. and it makes it strong so there is no peace at the domestic level or or in the uh, at home there is no peace mm. but this will be good yeah which is the professional life which the status people would see that this person is doing good in life right they would not know that how much he is struggling at home no but as an astrologer you can say or you would know that this person would have a peaceless domestic life no you understood the concept yes yes so now whenever you are reading the chart the first thing you gonna read is the house number 1 Mm-hmm. which is the lagna when we see that there's a planet sitting here in the first house let's say it is planet x sitting here you would see first thing that you would see is if it is a natural benefic or yeah. a natural malefic yeah. <clears throat> right yes that is the first thing that you would see so that you know the influence on a person's life yeah then you would see the lordship of this planet that this planet is obviously would be lord of some house this is a gemini ascendant chart mm-hmm. any planet sitting here would become a lord of any of these houses how if this is cancer the lord is moon mm-hmm. if moon comes and sits here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that means first thing is that it is moon there m- moon now you would see that the sign it has come in you know about the friendship and the enmity thing also mm-hmm. you know friendship friendship and friendship and enmity of the planets yeah gemini gemini is friend of moon but moon is no no is... so you know that the lord of gemini is mercury yes and you see his relationship with moon that is one okay so you would know if moon is placed here that if it is a an enemy or a friend that yeah. is one thing you would see the other thing is that moon if it sits here it has taken control of the first house mm-hmm. lord of the first house is mercury yeah lagna lord is mercury mm-hmm. the ruler of the chart is mercury right mm-hmm. but on the first house moon has taken control right okay so first thing is the nature of moon which is the karak tatva its relationship to the sign one to third the lordship so it is the lord of the second house 
you have cancer sign here, right? Yes. In the second house, you have cancer sign. The Lord of Cancer is Moon. Uh -huh. So Moon here in this chart is Lord of the second house. And if it goes and sit in the first house, what will we say? That the Lord of the second house is sitting in the first house. Yeah. Which means the planet who is, who is controlling the first house has brought three things with him. One is the nature of the planet. Mm -hmm. It's relationship with the sign. And third, it's lordship or whatever role it has in the chart. Okay. Correct? Yes. If I say a planet is sitting here in the sixth, in the fourth house, who is the lord of the fourth house? Um, Mercury. Mercury. So if, let's say Mercury is sitting here. Mm -hmm. Lord of the fourth house sitting in the fourth house. Mm -hmm. No problem at all. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. Who's the Lord of the seventh house? Of uh, fifth house, sorry. Sun. No, no, Lord of the fifth house. Oh, sorry. Uh, um, Venus. Venus, yes. Mm. You see Libra sign here, right? Yeah. Lord of Libra is Venus. Yeah. Correct? Yes. If we say that Lib that Venus goes and sits here yes. in the 10th house, mm -hmm. which is Pisces, mm -hmm. now I would say that 5th Lord, 5th house this is, This is fifth house, right? Yes. With Libra sign in it. Mm -hmm. So which means Venus becomes the Lord of the fifth house. Yes. No matter where it sits in the chart. But Venus yes. is the Lord of the fifth house. Yes. Correct? Yes. Venus goes and sits in the tenth house. Yes. So what will we say? We will say that the Lord of the fifth house is sitting in the tenth house. And yes. controlling the 10th house. Yes. Correct? Yes. And basis, this we will make the predictions. Okay. You're with me? Yes. Let's say sun sits here. Uh -huh. What will you say? Which planet is, planet is sitting here? So... Uh... The ruler of the third house. So we will say it is the third lord. Third lord, yes. Sitting in the seventh house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. So, when we see a planet in the first house, so that means that planet, planet has taken control over the first house. Mm -hmm. It is affecting the personality of the person. Yeah. And then it, it has a lordship also. First, we take a natural benefit in the first house. Then we'll take a natural malefic. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the first difference that you, uh, you would see is then when there's natural benefit. So natural benefit planet brings beneficence it makes the life easier of a person. Mm -hmm. For the overall life of a person, you can say the life has become easier. Right. If you see a natural malefic here, mm -hmm. you can simply say that life is full of or the life has stress. Right. Life is not as easy right. for somebody who has natural malefic here. Now, draw two charts. You can draw a chart, right? Yes. Draw a Aries Lagna chart. Mm -hmm. 
एंड ड्रॉ अ जेमिना लगना चार्ट टेल मी वेन यूर रेडी ओ यस यू प्रोडी फास्ट यू ड्रॉन बोथ द चार्ट इन द एरिया इज लगना चार्ट you you've made the complete chart you mentioned all, all all the signs in the houses no well wait i i finish um, or at least the numbers yeah yes ready so in the aries lagna chart right jupiter in the first house mm-hmm. and in the mithuna lagna or the gemini lagna chart gemini ascendant chart right saturn in the first house yeah what do you say about both these charts yes yeah, so, uh yeah the first impression is that the person with the aries lagna chart will have uh, an easier life than the person with the uh, mituna draw one more chart okay mega aquarius lagna chart also tell me when you are ready mm-hmm. right venus in the first house of aquarius lagna chart now you tell me about the three charts what do you see from the first house mm I think the person with the Venus lagna chart would have the easiest life because Venus is also functional uh benefic. Yes and then, it is. And then uh second uh the Mituna the Gemini lagna chart because uh, Saturn is uh, functional uh benefic. benefic. Yeah. And so I give you an example. Uh you would know that uh, you would have met a lot of people and since all three planets are ninth lord in the chart. Okay. Representing father. Mhm. Uh-huh, mhm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Sitting in the first house. Okay. Which means ninth lord is controlling the lagna. right uh-huh. Uh-huh. so the first thing that you can say is that this person is influenced by his father right uh-huh. so kind of father is controlling this person you can say that because the ninth lord is sitting in the first house uh-huh. now for a a person who is a aries lagna person mm-hmm. jupiter being lord of the ninth house sitting in the first house the father is obviously has the karaktatvas of jupiter and the person also has the karaktatvas of jupiter jupiter being jupiter sitting in the first house mm-hmm. you would see righteousness in this person his father would also be righteous mm. jupiter being the lord of the ninth mm. and this person you would see that he would say that then my father has a lot of expectations with me and, and it is my responsibility to make sure that i uh, that, uh, that i do well and uh, mm. bring glory to my father yeah mm-hmm. for the person with aquarius ascendant you see venus in the first house so first thing is that uh, you would see this person is obviously a handsome person venus being uh, a planet of beauty sitting in the first house mm-hmm. will give obviously good personality to the person mm-hmm. if he is a person guy he will be a handsome guy mm-hmm. 
kind of driven by luxuries also and he would love he, he would be brand conscious also and all that stuff because venus is there for him also um, although his father would be uh, uh, kind of a brand conscious kind of a person a wealthy person could be but um, here also this person would feel the responsibility of what his father wants from him mm. yeah so if his father is calling him again and again to, he would he is sitting with his friends he would say that my father is really uh, worried for me and he is uh, uh, he thinks really good of me that i i should do good and i should do well and that's why he loves me so much that he loves me unconditionally and he always he is thinking of me and he has that kind of a mindset for his father mm. yeah the influence of father is equal in all three people's life right yeah it is the ninth lord sitting in the first house you would see this different personality because of the nature of the planets that right. is one but from the lordship perspective it is the ninth lord sitting in the first house it governs uh principles or dharma and it will try and make the person righteous also mm. the way you can say jupiter being naturally the lord of those qualities of dharma wherever mm. jupiter is sitting the person would be kind of moral driven mm. he would have high moral values because jupiter is there but now the person who who has gemini lagna and saturn being hmm. the ninth lord yeah he would be stressed yeah by the fact that his father is after his life hmm. you would you would have met people that my father is really a pain hmm. he is after me all the time right yeah so there may be fear fear also fear uh, being yes. afraid so all. this is this is the struggle that you see right right hmm. a malefic planet mm. causes stress mm. 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 it is the same placement mm. 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 in all three charts right the ninth lord mm. comes and sits in the first house mm. the guy is kind of like his father that is one because the father's influence on him mm. Mm. yeah first house is you you have your father's influence on you in the other perspective good thing is the ninth house is house of divine grace mm. this is a beautiful placement you will always have divine grace right yeah mm. the difference here comes with the natural nature of the planet yeah mm. when there's venus it is a good relation and the feeling is also of a responsibility and kind of a happy feeling that mm. you want to do something good and uh, make your father proud when there is jupiter it is happy it is good it is kind of uh, driven with principles and that this is the moral responsibility obviously mm. that the person is caring uh he's he's under his father's influence but he would see this as a responsibility mm. that i that i am supposed to do it mm. yeah for somebody having saturn as the ninth lord will always feel pressure mm. of this relationship mm -hmm. he would also be right yes though mm -hmm. but he would always feel pressure of this fact mm -hmm. you understood the difference yes yes so this is how you differentiate mm. between the natural benefics mm. and the natural malefics mm. now if mars becomes the ninth lord comes and sits in the first house uh yes uh in the pisces lagna yes you place mars in the first house he 
here you would see that the that because father wants to discipline the child he could get physical also with him right okay yeah and in the natural nature of this person you would see that he is kind of an uh, he has anxiety and he is kind of agitated yeah to the time because mars a planet of conflict fights sitting in the lagna sitting in the head he is always kind of uh, dealing with some kind of stress thinking over uh, trying to do multiple things and kind of mm -hmm. the nature would be such that the person is kind of in some kind of anxiety although it wouldn't be so bad because it is the ninth lord it is a functional benefic planet mm -hmm. sitting in the house of a friend obviously jupiter it is a water sign not matching the uh, the qualities of mars but there would be this feeling of agitation frustration a little bit uh, and anxiety would you would see the anxiety mm -hmm. uh, and this relationship would also be uh, the father's influence would be mm -hmm. in kind of a uh, uh, discipline kind of a manner mm -hmm. yeah so the father is trying to discipline the person mm -hmm. and he would always feel that pressure mm -hmm. so this mm -hmm. is the difference that functional benefic and malefic create mm -hmm. yeah. if it is a fifth lord a functional benefic the person will always first he is kind of controlled by the by the fifth house if he has kids yeah he would always think about his kids right he would be driven towards full, uh, his kids or uh, fulfilling their requirements and looking their requirements as or looking at this these kids that he is if it is venus he is kind of uh, emotionally uh, or he has this unconditional love and mm. he feels responsibility of the kids or or the things he has created his creativity or the artistic talents you you would see the, but he would enjoy that mm. yeah he would in, enjoy this fact that he has influence of the fifth house yeah yeah but if it is a malefic planet the person would see this as a painful responsibility Mm -hmm. that i have to take care of my kids mm -hmm. it is so expensive their education is so expensive they don't listen to me he they are this they are this they are this so he sees that as a pressure on himself right if it is a malefic planet mm -hmm. you're clear about it yes no confusion on this account no mm -hmm. that how you are reading a chart how you are reading a house up until now not so now. yeah so so we would we will start this series of different planets in different houses mm -hmm. and we will make these predictions like for 12 house lots when they come and sit in a house what will be the different predictions we will try and make we will discuss simply and we will make easy simple predictions which are so that uh, you understand the principles and you can then keep building upon okay. it and then you can take the liberty and uh, take the freedom and make more relations out of it. We've kind of covered the first house today. Yeah. yeah. 